Today I'm taking a look at the Ace Beam Terminator M2. It's a dual beam EDC light. It's got a floodlight and a spotlight. Got two switches, a tail switch and this toggle switch on the side, the battery status indicator. It's a nice little pocket clip and it takes an 18650 cell here. So it comes in this nice box, it's very shiny. That looks lovely. So a couple of specs on the side, We've got cool white. So the green M2 comes in cool white, 65,000 Kelvin. It's a low cry model. And the black uh, M2 is neutral white. It's 5,000 Kelvin and it's a higher cry, 90 cry. It's about 2,000 lumens with the higher uh, color temperature. So let's check out what's in the box. Inside the box is another box and it's also very shiny. It contains the accessories. So you've got the a lanyard a USB A to C charging cable, two spare O-rings, I've got a warranty card and a user manual. So it's got lots of details. And the most important thing, which I've already taken out because I've had this for a couple of weeks, but is the Ace Beam Terminator M2. So it comes with a battery included. When it's uh, straight out of the box, it will have a little insulation film bit. So you just take that little piece of plastic out and then you can use the battery that helps prevent the torch from turning on while it's in transit because you could accidentally turn it on by pressing this button. Let's take this outside and see what it looks like at night time. The color temperature is quite cool for this green Ace Beam M2 in both the floodlight and the spotlight and the color rendering index is a little on the low side. If you'd like something a bit warmer and a high cry, like 90 cry, you should go for the black Ace Beam M2 instead. The runtime results are quite impressive and I really like how well regulated the output is. You can see those flat lines, it's quite stable over time. The included 18650 cell can be charged by hooking up a USB-C cable and you'll see that the indicator is currently red. It will become green when charging is complete, so that's pretty much it, it's quite simple. The build quality of the Ace Beam M2 is excellent. I love how they've anodized the threads. It turns nice and smoothly. There's heaps of grip on the towel cap here. Because it's anodized, I can unscrew it and disconnect the cell so that the standby current doesn't drain the battery uh, eventually. So it's got a really low standby current, it's like 70 or something uh, microamps. It's like really, really, really low. So it's going to take years to self-discharge the cell while in the torch if it's turned off. Let's take a look at the build quality overall. So in the design, so that tail cap is really familiar it looks very much like the ace beam e70 so it's pretty much the same cnc metal button and the same bezel i did try to take this off with some uh, snap ring pliers and uh, it's i think it's glued on so i managed to damage the e70 so i won't really reattempt that with the the m2 i'll probably end up damaging it in fact i tried to uh, remove one of these bezels and I think they might be glued in or they're quite tough and I'll end up just scratching and damaging it because I wanted to see the type of lens if it's like a biconvex um, glass lens in there and yeah see what how it's made and I think that's a glass yeah that's 
a blue anti-reflective coating on the glass, which is nice. And there's a plastic TIR triple optic there that provides a bit of flood and throw. So it's not completely floody like a mule. It provides a an, an decent amount of throw. And this is much more throwy though, the, the spotlight with the lens. So it's yeah, like two torches in one. It's got a really strong and loud uh, switch here between floodlight and spotlight. And yeah, a nice cover with a satisfying click. So it's a stiff pocket clip. I do wish it was a bit longer and had a like a deep carry so I could put this all in my pocket. It's yeah, not a completely a deep carry uh, pocket clip here. Let's check out the user interface. The user interface for the M2 is quite intuitive for the floodlight and spotlight. So let's go through each of those modes first. So I've got floodlight, click once to turn it on, click to turn it off. I can hold for moonlight mode. So that's moonlight mode. And if I hold again, it will go into a main cycle group. So if I just click it off and click it on again, it's memorized that mode. So it can go to low, medium one, medium two, high, turn it off and it's memorized high and cycle back to low. You can double click for turbo, turn it off, turn it on again and it's gone back to low. It doesn't memorize turbo. You can double click from off to access turbo. So that's, yeah, that's the floodlight. You've got moonlight, low, medium one, medium two, high and turbo. For the spotlight, we've got uh, high officially. There's just the one mode. But you, there is a secret mode for Spotlight. So we can access a secret hidden mode. Let's check it out. Darren Yeo showed me this one. So check out his YouTube channel. But let's go through. So we need to lock this out by holding. So we'll access Moonlight. Continue to hold. And now it's flash twice to say, or three times to say that it's locked out. When it's locked out and I click that battery status indicator, will just flash red and green. So I just hold to unlock while it's in spotlight mode and it turns on and it's accessed this low spotlight mode of about 17 lumens. So it's a really cool trick. I didn't know about it. And thanks Darren here for showing me that. <laughs> yeah, it's a, I really want to see like low, medium one, medium two and high for the spotlight. It would be cool if that was the same because it would just make it perfectly symmetrical and a bit more intuitive. So if we go back to that lockout mode, or rather we hold for moonlight and go into the RGB. So we've got the seven different colors being cycled through. We can't really select the colors. It's just gonna cycle through each one. If I hold the button, it will go into red. Hold again, I can select green and then blue. I've got a special green beacon mode where it flashes every few seconds. And we've got this red SOS mode, which I'm not a big fan of. It would be great just to have an SOS mode in the, with the main emitters so you can actually see a white light from a distance in emergency situations. That's almost it. There is a strobe mode, so yeah, strobe warning. So I click four times for strobe. Oh, and I can't forget, if you want to turn both these lights on, just uh, three clicks, one, two, three. <laughs> so I've got three, three clicks to uh, access both of them at the same time. And that's just high, so you can't really adjust the output level. It's just on high constantly. That is the user interface. Overall, the Ace Beam M2 performs quite well as an EGC torch. I really like the option and just the ability to go between floodlight and spotlight. It's yeah, nice to hold in cigar grip and switch between the two. It's a lot of fun. It is a bit of an odd shape, but it is quite compact and pocketable. So I highly recommend this torch. If you want something a little bit more powerful, maybe consider the M1, but I really like this size. It's yeah, a really nice EDC torch. Thanks, Ace Beam. Feel free to check out the full review on my website in the description below and check out lightshop.com.au for the Ace Beam M2 if you're in Australia and want to buy locally from Australia. Yeah, thank you.